uh, thanks for joining our session today. And uh, today our topic is about open source in the future of the and linking innovation on the mainframe. Uh, in today's session, we will introduce the open source in general on IBM Z and discuss the challenges of the closed closed source model of a traditional approach on Z development. Uh, we will highlight some successful examples of open source stories on IBM Z, especially uh, the open mainframe projects. Uh, this talk is prepared by me and Ji Chen and uh, Mike Fresenager. Um, yeah. Uh, first, introduce our. Um, my name is Ma Dong. I'm software engineer at IBM and uh, Open Mainframe Project and the City Foundation ambassador. Uh, I'm now work for IBM Cloud Infrastructure Center, uh, offering on-premise cloud deployment on the IBM Z and IBM Linux One. And uh, we have another co-speaker, Mike, but unfortunately, he cannot join the conference in person. And Mike is a solution architect in the SUSE, Global Sales Organization. Uh, he works with the Global IBM Alliance and closely with many groups in IBM to identify, test, and document, document joint solutions that help SUSE and IBM create a unique value in the marketplace. Um, his specialized include IBM Z and the power system, IBM Cloud, high availability, high availability and as a SUSE SAP champion. Um, focus on the SAP solutions, use SUSE technologies. And uh, this is my college teacher. Uh, hi, everyone. So it's my pleasure to have this chance to present to you. And my name is Ji Chen, and I'm working for IBM. Uh, I have been working for open source for more than 10 years. Um, currently, I'm working on, uh, previously, I'm working on like an OpenStack community for a lot of contributions for compute and network. Now I'm working for some like a CNCF com projects, like a sustainable computing, like Kepler, and working on the cluster API, OpenStack, cloud provider, OpenStack. Um, currently, the maintainer for these projects. Um, thanks. And uh, this is our agenda today. And uh, in today's talk, uh, we will first uh, introduce the IBM Z and the IBM Linux One. And the second, we will discuss the importance of innovation on IBM Z and some challenges of the closed source model. Uh, then we will highlight some success open source stories, and the open mainframe projects and the Philon projects. Um, next, we will discuss some tech technical challenges of developing open source software for IBM Z and the potential solutions to overcoming the challenges. At last, we will list some benefits of open source Z development and the future trade in open source development on Z. Um, Okay, first I will give you an overview of IBM Z cap capabilities and the key features. Um, IBM Z platform known as the foundation of enterprise computing. Um, for, for the latest Z16 uh, platform, uh, it enables the decision velocity by delivering insights at speed and the scale through the integrated the accelerators for AI. Uh, it also protects today's data against current and future cyber threats with quantum safe protection. Uh, it also in enhances resilience with flexible um, capa capacity 
to dynamically shift system resource to proactively avoid disruptions. Um, it's modernized and integrate applications and data in a hybrid cloud environment to innovate with speed and agility. Um, for IBM Z, uh, it, it has following key features. Uh, first is the artificial intelligence. It uses AI and machine learning to con convert data for every transaction into real-time insights with IBM Z. And another is the hybrid cloud. It integrates IBM Z into your hybrid cloud to deliver innovation with gr greater productivity. Um, also, the mainframe application modernization. Um, modernized mainframe application with consistent uh, enterprise-wide practice and uh, leveraging the generative AI. Uh, another key, key feature is the uh, sustainability. Um, it's reduced the energy consumption by consolidating select x86 workloads onto a single physical IBM Z system. Um, another key feature is the security. Um, it strengthens security to help protect your business data against the cyber threats, threats in, in, including the ransomware with IBM Z. And the last key feature is the resiliency. It achieves up to eight, nine application availability and uh, accelerated system recovery. Um, and next, uh, the we will introduce the Link to One platform. Um, so the mainframe has been there for several decades, and we have done a lot of hardware innovations. Uh, for every release, we have done a lot. For example, we have to do the on-chip compression, uh, on-chip encryption, and more recently, thanks for the, the AI evolution, right? We are, we are doing on-chip inference. This has been added as well. So as you can see here, um, the hardware innovations has been done on the platform for a long time. With those hardware benefits we have introduced, we have um, achieved certain capabilities like uh, high reliability, which means we are, we are having seven nine, six nines, that we can help the customer to achieve the uh, availability to very, very low downtime or almost zero downtime. Um, we, are, we are having high performance because our special made IO topology, IO architecture makes us to be able to do like a, um, like a must IO. And last but not least, we can achieve the high density. Uh, as you can see here, we are, we are able to support um, 50, 50, uh, 85 airports, which I'm going to talk in later. But you can see we support 8,000 virtual machine inside just one box. The, with this box, we are able to run 8,000 virtual machines and millions of Docker containers in just this one box. What we call this is, uh, I, I would call it like a scale up. You know, in, in, a, in the IT industry, we are, we, are, we are doing a lot of a scale out today, but with the Z box, in our previous release or previous um, engagement. So the scale up capability has been greatly improved. Um, so this is for the hardware, but we need to embrace the, the, the new IT industry. So in the mainframe, we have two operating systems, software stack, one is ZOS, all right? This has been there since the first day of the mainframe is introduced. It's, it's around 60 years ago. Um, but we started a journey of uh, embrace the Linux. More than 20 years ago, uh, our colleagues in Germany started a journey with Linux community. Um, I don't know whether you guys are familiar with the Linux code, because I'm not a kernel developer. But I used to be, you know, develop our own file system. 
So there are, you know, in kernel, if you check the check the tree, you will find um, there are a photo called arc, which like ARM, like a power P, power PC, or like uh, all the other architectures actually in the in the source tree, right? Uh, the mainframe is actually its naming is S three ninety X for now. Um, even though we are, we are, I think I was told by my colleagues, I think maybe 0.5% of the code are actually for our specific architecture. The other 99.5% of the code, we are exactly identical to the Linux operating system. So, which means we never ever change the code for the, for the memory, for the, for the memory, for the, you know, uh, scheduler and nothing has changed. Just the focusing on IO and CPU topology, CPU, right? So we have, we have done many successful stories since then. I, I mean, with the, with the customers, with the with the users, um, so we are, we understand in, embrace the open source and country back build back to the open source community is essential. So as you can see here, we have many many open source projects we have been engaged with. This is just a very small portion of the of the open source project. As you can see here, KVM OpenStack is you know long time ago and maybe other projects as list as well. So we understand this is um, you know, very, very, very important for us. Um, and with the acquisition of Red Hat in last, I think, five or six years ago, right, we know we, we, know we need to embrace the, the cloud native because that's the future, that's the um, you know, future IT. In the meantime, we need to understand that we need to be, st you know, customer workload need to be steady and dynamic, right? Steady means they have to run their workload for a long time. Like, uh, like uh, if I go to customer last week, uh, I went to Japan, and the week before I went to Singapore, I met some customer there. They are using Manfrey. I talked for them. I talked to them for Kubernetes, for cloud, for all, everything, Ansible, Terraform, everything, right? For the infrastructure defi definitions. Uh, the customer is aware about Ansible. They, they, they are aware of uh, Kubernetes, but they didn't understand the benefit of using the Kubernetes. And he said, what can I benefit if I am having a mainframe, right? I need, to, I need to make my daily job easier. So we're convinced them that they need to embrace the CNCF or cloud native or the open source because they can bring value to them. They need to understand you have a steady, steady IT, right? But you need to be having have like a, like a AI, like a cloud native, any applications need to be running there to gain benefit, not only get a steady environment, but also dynamic. So, you know, achieve the fun business agility and business, business steady. So um, we, as, as I said, we're, we're trying to bring this cloud native or Kubernetes, everything open source related to the platform to make customer able to using our stuff, right? And you know, with the OpenShift today, we are able to unblock or unlock the way for customers using mainframe to do a lot of uh, you know applications like uh, like uh, uh, AI or other things, right? We are we're on the way. We started a journey, I think, since the day Red Hat was acquired. So we started conversations, we started talks with them. We have made a lot of good progress. If you if you check, I, I don't know whether everyone here know OpenShift, but it's kind of a, a very important hybrid cloud solution for uh, for Red Hat, right? It's the, it's the. I'm, I'm not saying one of the, you know, I'm not saying the only one factor of uh, of IBM to acquire Red Hat, but it's a, it's it's a very important factor. One of the very important factor to acquire them. So we are building the the whole software solutions based on the Red Hat as the, OpenShift as the platform. So everything we are doing today is trying to make this platform to be consumable by customer, right? I think. Their latest release is 4.16, but we, I mean, the mainframe project has engaged with them, I think, eight or nine release cycles ago. So, again, uh, we are helping customer, especially the customer 
who are not very familiar with cloud native, who are not very familiar with open source. We go to customer, we show them the value, we understand what we, they understand what we can deliver to them, and we are trying to make them to on a journey to like, uh, you know, doing the, doing the open source, they understand the values, and they are on the way. I'm, I'm not saying they're gonna do it today, but maybe in five years after we continue to engage, continue to talking to them, right? Like our, you know, like a, um, like a, you know, a Red Hat is just one thing, right? But we are on the Z platform. We have other things like a Susi, right? We have friends here. Um, they are they are they are also very important uh, partner with us to do the to do the, uh, the the open source things, right? That's the that's the value and the things we are doing for the open source and you know for mainframe to be to be uh, uh, successful and to be sustainable to the IT industry. So yeah, um, as Jitra mentioned, in, in modern enterprise computing, uh, innovation is also important on the IBM Z. And, uh, and the following elements are crucial. Um, the rapid technology advancement. Uh, innovation is uh, essential for business to stay ahead of these changes, uh, adopting new technologies. Um, also need addressing complex business ch challenges. Um, modern enterprise face the unique, unique and the challenges that require customized solutions. Uh, innovation allows business to tailor their technology stacks. Um, also, it enhancing the competitiveness. Uh, innovation enable business to differentiate it themselves in the market. Um, leveraging open source and shared knowledge. Open source software is the power of collaboration in innovation. Um, adopting to change customer expectations um, allows business to create a more um, personalized efficiency uh, customer interactions, uh, enhance the certificate uh, enhance the, the customer's certification. Uh, we also encourage a culture of continuous improvement and uh, to support the digital transformation, uh, like the, the, the new technologies such as uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning. Uh, we, we need to integrate these technologies into in, existing the enterprise computing. Um, as the important of the uh, innovation, the traditional closed uh, mode um, development faced uh, some challenges for the IBM Z. Uh, first is the vendor locking. Uh, the closed source software typically relies on the vendor's technologies. Um, it limited access to the code, and the closed source software with uh, restrict access to the source code. Business cannot modify or extend the function on the IBM Z platform easily. So it uh, will influence the, the innovation cycle. Um, so uh, it, it's, it's difficult to quickly uh, adopt the new technologies. Um, as the closer faced many challenges for IBM Z, so we have some success stories for the open mainframe projects. Um, yeah, so open mainframe project is uh, um, one of the Linux Foundation projects. Um, it's trying to get more people to onboard to the platform. So it's a vision, it's, the main, it's active, integrated, and essential part of the modern enterprise IT um, consumable by a mainframe, by mainstream developers. So uh, again, it's just a building ecosystem. So we understand for 
I, I guess maybe not not everyone here is a developer, but uh, if uh, if you are a developer, I guess you understand the the IT industry. The more important things recently is the is the ecosystem, right? We know that uh, you know there are a lot of uh, different projects that are doing the doing the cloud native and the, the, the Kubernetes is a winner and de facto, right, it's a de facto standard because it has a lot of an ecosystem that we can have customer. So we understand that ecosystem is important. That's the reason why IBM built such project to have more people on board. Um, when I say more people, I'm talking about like uh, the different companies, different customers, and students, and every every people who are who are uh, interested in the, in this, right? So we are fun. We we build this project. We working with different people from global across the world, um, like. Um, like uh, uh, we have, I'm not going to introduce. We have uh, some some interns from India, from China, from US. They are working together with us to build a build a system, and we have a weekly or a monthly calls with uh, um, with people in Europe or people in, uh, in in US. Right? We have a different engage with them. We understand each other's benefit. We understand each other's requirement. So we jointly build such environment or su such um, projects for to make us a successful ecosystem to build. Um, we have, uh, as you can see here, we have um, several projects. We also have uh, uh, like uh, the CNCF, you know, you can graduate, you can incubate, uh, and something. So, Open Man from Jack is uh, is also here. Right? It's have uh, I don't know. I, I'm I'm not sure everyone here on this, uh, you know, has some experience on the COBOL or on the, on on the things uh, like the ZOS development. But we do have the uh, the way that we unblock you to attend the uh, you know the ecosystem to to be familiar with the Z and Z ecosystem. So we also have. Uh, like uh, yeah, I, uh, every every everyone in this world, you are able to log in to the something called IBM Linux One Community Cloud or something. Um, you can search for that keyword and you can log on to apply it like a public cloud, right? But its backend is uh, IBM Z or Linux uh, IBM Z system, so you can apply for results there to get for free, and you can develop or test on the environment to do. So. Uh, here, Maidon and I, we are actually working on this one. Fei Long. Uh, actually, in, chi in Chinese, Fei, because it's incubated, it's uh, developed, it's maintained by people in China, especially in China, because me, Maidon, and other, other folks. So we name it as uh, Fly Dragon. So for Western people, if you, are, uh, if you are not familiar with this word, Fei means fly. Long means dragon. So actually, we we originally thought it might be fly dragon, but then uh, our 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 colleagues in, I mean Mike, who unfortunately cannot be here, he proposed that because this is from China. So you guys name it and like a fei long fly dragon. So we use that name. As you can see, it's it's totally different to to add to the other other projects, right? Like uh, Zoe or like Gatla, Tasia, all this name are Western, except the Phelon, it's, uh, it's just uh, some kind of a tradition, right? So, Yeah, um, as Jichen mentioned, um, uh, I, I will do some introduce about Phelon project. Um, actually, uh, before the Phelon open source, uh, it, it's just the, developed inside the IBM, and uh, it's um, it's a developed uh, REST API server um, to simplify the interaction with the IBM ZVM hypervisor. Um, and uh, the team discussed and to open source this to want to have a like a community to work together to contribute to the the project um, to make the project strong. And uh, after it open sourced, I, I think we have more contributions from different um, uh, global companies, and uh, we have to promote Phelon in different uh, 
like the Open Source Conference, um, like the, the SHARE, the Open Mainframe Summit. Uh, also, uh, we have the, uh, the, the in, inter, internship uh, each year, like teacher mission. It, uh, the intern from uh, India, China, US, and a lot of contribution from the community to make this project uh, more better. Yeah. Uh, although we have many success stories on the development of open source software for Z, um, we also f faced many technical challenges here, and uh, like the API limitation, um, like many APIs uh, in the IBM Z environment, uh, like the up-to-date up documentation, um, it made it difficult for developers to understand how to use them. Also, the API didn't uh, expose all the function, uh, all the functions available on the IBM Z platform. Um, it uh, limit the developer to uh, to to better understand. Um, also, uh, the API might not. Uh, have designed with uh, uh, different uh, systems. So um, it's difficult to integra integrate with like the um, cloud solutions. Um, also, the, the APIs uh, have some performance bottlenecks. Um, if uh, we handle the high volumes of transactions, um, the API may not uh, have uh, uh, provided the sufficient security controls, uh, so maybe have some potential vulnerabilities. Um, like I mentioned earlier, it also have the vendor lock-in, um, um, so it made it very difficult to scale up um, to slow the innovation cycle. Um, also, for uh, we have another concern is the uh, compatibility. Um, for the IBM Z system, it, it have the unique architecture uh, and the instruction. Uh, it's different with like the x86 or ARM architectures. Uh, like it can be lead the compatibility issues. Uh, for example, like the big ending, tap bytes and the little ending. Um, also the latest IBM Z system is rely on some uh, like the legacy libraries. Uh, so for like the uh, modern open source software, there will be some issue to do the integration. Uh, we also have some latency middleware, such as the DB2, uh, so um, it'd be challenging to uh, integration the middleware. Um, also, IBM Z typically runs on a special, specific operating system, like ZOS, ZVM, um, so, um, it's also dif different with the Linux, um, so it also has the issues. Um, but like Dijon mentioned earlier, we have adopted a lot of open source on the IBM Z and the Linux one. So, yeah, uh, we have a travel out. Um, as, as we have many technical challenges, um, first we have some potential solutions to, o to overcome in some challenges. Um, we try to enable the DevOps um, practice with the IBM Z um, for the hybrid cloud. Um, and uh, you can see the, the pipeline. 
the it it's a it's a theme with the like the typical DevOps pipeline. It in, include each stage from the code management, build, um, preparation, uh, deploy, testing, monitor. And uh, I, I will highlight two stages. For, first is the build stage. Um, for the build stage, we have, um, how to say, to uh, incorporate uh, with many uh, platform. It built with the Docker container images, and uh, it can uh, run on different uh, environment like ZOS, CVM, or the Linux. Um, also, for the provision and the deployment, uh, we have uh, we re we uh, rely on the infrastructure layer. Uh, uh, instructors layer. It uh, have the different hypervisor to provide a different environment, like the ZVM, like the x86 platform. Um, also, we use the dev of pipeline to automate the security and the test automation uh, to help the Z development and uh, to overcome the like the security issue, the vulnerability issue. Um, by Im implementing this practice, uh, so we can uh, offer, uh, we can um, better organize the whole development on the IP IBM Z platform. Um, yeah, Zichen. Yeah, so last but not least, uh, I'd like to give another example about what we have done in the open source project, right? Um, not sure everyone in, in this room uh, has been drawing, I think it's last or the, the, the I mean, last year's uh, CNCF meeting, because there is a, a keynote from Red Hat, I think uh, Hua Ming from Red Hat presented the Kepler project for uh, for the uh, new initiative, right? That's um, Kepler stands for the Kubernetes-based efficient power level export, uh, exporter. It's aiming to using technology like uh, eBPF, which I I think everyone might might know what it is, right? It's kind of a very innovative uh, project that we can capture or get the data from the kernel. Um, including the some kind of AI that we are using to do the like uh, currently they are doing linear regression, but they are gonna add more model to that. Uh, it's gonna calculate the energy or the emission of the carbon for you. So with that, you can optimize the scheduler. You can optimize the way that you handle your workload. Uh, it's it's a uh, uh, it's a way. I think it's already in OpenShift for um, last, I think last release, it's for technical review, technical preview, sorry. Um, so here we have been working with, um, with IBM, with Red Hat, with, uh, with Intel, with other teams. Uh, we have jointly created this project and for IBM mainframe, actually we are part of that team. Uh, the reason is simple. As I introduced in a previous chart, we have a lot of hardware innovations, like uh, on on chip encryption, on chip compression, or uh, the on chip infants. Right, those kind of technology uh, need to calculate the energy or cons the carbon emission as well. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, the mainframe is mostly as you know as of today, it it can scale up and scale out. But when we talk about the scale up capability, we are we are talking about you know a lot of uh, a lot of workload inside one box. So it's a little different to x86 because or to ARM because the architecture is different. So how are we gonna efficiently 
uh, speed of energy for all the ports or for all the VMs that are running on the, on the platform. How are we going to calculate that? And to be fair, to be fair, distribute those energy consumptions. Those are the questions we need to answer. All right. That's the that's kind of uh, cooperations and contributions that we. I just take this as an example because, as, as you know, we have uh, many many team members. Not just my team, my organization. We have many 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 open source contributors to working on open source, right? We, 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 don't, we do even have a, you know, a yearly kind of self-nomination for the open source contribution. If you, if you like uh, show your contribution list, show your current leadership in open source project, you will be honored with special award. So that's kind of a culture inside our company, IBM, to boost open source, to make open source better. Right. So we, I just take this as an example for Kepler that we're doing with a various team, various company. By the way, Kepler is the, is the incubation project in CCF. I, I don't know whether you, you guys you know, uh, have ever tried it, but you can, you can give it a try. It's, it's pretty simple. It's just using kind, and you can create an environment. For on the, of course, we have a different settings. So here, in the star marks, there is HMC, which we, it's our management endpoint. We have a special algorithm as well. But basically, it's the idea is same to gather the data from the kernel, from the eBPF, from the sensor, and do some kind of a calculations, just kind of uh, you know, uh, optimizations, and train a model, and finally you get data. And with that, you're gonna have in the metrics, right? Feed this metrics into Prometheus or into other servers, it doesn't matter. You go there, you consume this metrics, and you take your decision to schedule the workload to another node to gain better performance or less energy consumption. Right? That's your decision, which is a Kepler vision. I mean, currently, this Kepler project is focused on the exporter to get the data, but we are doing like a, you know smarter scheduling or other things that we're gonna we're gonna incubate in this project. And yeah, but for as I said, for for mainframe, we are we are actually working on that. Yeah, thanks, Dieter. Uh, actually. Um, uh, as mentioned, we we have many benefits from the open source development on the IBM Z. So um, I, I I think we get many uh, community support, and uh, we get better, fast innovation. Um, so um, so we I I think we think the open source chain is uh, to uh, change the traditional closed source model to a new development model and uh, to give many uh, fast innovation benefit uh, for the both the developer and the business. Yeah, that, that's our today's topic. Thank you.